PS Comet has been a focal point for the community of Port Glasgow and carries many of the great achievements which made Port Glasgow a world-renowned shipbuilding industry. The rebuild of the Comet has again offered men the opportunity to learn traditional boat building skills which were once the lifeblood on the River Clyde. Across the dual carriageway in Port Glasgow is a launch site where 199 years ago the first commercial passenger carrying steamship slipped into the waters of the Clyde. That launch was to rock the shipbuilding world and the tiny boat built by John Wood of Port Glasgow was to become the mother of the British steamship. Henry Bell, designer of the Comet, had a vision which was to become an anchor of the history of Port Glasgow and he was the primary player in the creation of the first passenger carrying steamship. The hull of the boat was to come from John Wood, Port Glasgow, the engines from John Robertson, builder of pumping engines, and David Napier was to make the boiler. The Comet was launched on the 24th of July 1812 and achieved a place in history as the first steamship to be run commercially in Europe. Tragically, the Comet was lifted onto the rocks at Craignish Point near Oban in 1820, and although no one was injured, the Comet's sea life had come to an end. However, Port Glasgow never forgot the achievements of John Wood, who lived at the corner of King Street and Scarlow Street. His father, John Wood Sr., had been employed by McGill, the first recorded shipbuilder in Port Glasgow, in August 1912, Port Glasgow held centenary celebrations to mark the anniversary of the launch of the Comet. Port Glasgow is well known for the landmark, which is the replica of the Comet. William Lithgow funded this memorial, which was to mark the 150th anniversary of the launch of the Comet. Sir William contracted George Thompson of Bucky to build the hull of the replica. Well, my name is Jim Parker. Uh, I serve my time as a painter, not in Thompson's, in the opposition yard. <laughs> Harry Mackenzie is just along the harbour. Mm. But the yards had a good rapport between each other and they helped each other out wherever they could. Uh, I started, as I said, I served my time as a painter, then I became yard manager and director and then for five years or so I actually owned the yard and then uh, the yard was sold and I was still carried on. I finished up being there for 55 years. So I liked it so I just stayed on. <laughs> Good for you. Well, my name's John Addis. I'm an engineer, marine engineer. I served my time in Dobson Shipyard as an engineer. And at the time, I was seconded up to the boat building yard when the comet was about to be built. And my task was to operate the boiler for steaming the planks and assisting the carpenters in the building of the court. That's my... Uh, Your role? My role involved with the court. The lunch was at the Burn Shore in, in the East Yard. And uh, as far as I remember, it was Lord McClay that launched the boat. Lord McClay, if he came back home, he 
he was the Secretary of State for Scotland at that time, in the government. And he came down, but he never went on the boat. He, <laughs> he stayed away from it. And uh, what do you call him, Sir William Luskin, his wife, and all the, uh, how can I say, members of the establishment, the Luskin group, all went on board, about, say, about 20 people. And they launched it, and they went to the Kingston Basin. And they worked on the far away hill, and then they went over to Helensburgh. And they got off at Helensburgh, and they met the provost at Dumbarton. I think there's a place called Cochrane Square where they had refreshments. And then they come back to the boat and they come onto their ship and they come back to the Coronation Park. And their steps at the Coronation Park at the, the how could I say, Custom House Key. Their steps there where they can come up at any state of the tide and come off the ship. So they all come off the ship and they made a wee dance and made the, how could I say, firework, the fireworks display at night. And they took the boat, they called it back to the Kingston Basin again, and they took it out of the crane and put it back in its cradle and put it back to the east yard. And it lay in the east yard in the middle of a sea shed or something, and it lay there for years before anybody looked at it to clean up. In 1998, the ship was moved by the Irvine Maritime Museum, where an array of boat builders completed the much needed repairs to the Comet. Henry Bell designed, John Wood built, the mother of the big steamship, this tiny boat fueled by corn steam. On a wet Sunday morning, 2010, the comet is once again the focal point of Port Glasgow. Some people gather to witness another lift for the comet as her condition has severely deteriorated and another refurbishment is required. Working in partnership, Inverclyde Council, Inverclyde Community Development Trust and Ferguson Shipyard come together to save the comet from her demise. The project offers employment to 10 local men, the majority of whom are funded through the Future Jobs Fund. The Future Jobs Fund is primarily aimed at young people aged between 18 to 24 who have been seeking work for six months or more. Locally, the programme has been delivered by Inverclyde Community Development Trust on behalf of Inverclyde Council. Ferguson Shipbuilders is the last remaining shipyard on the Lower Clyde, primarily working on the production of small commercial ships. Ferguson's are supporting the Comet Rebuilt programme by providing accommodation for the ship during the refurbishment and also by bringing their considerable expertise to the management of the project. Of historic note is the fact that Ferguson Shipbuilders stands on the site of Thomas McGill's yard, the first recorded shipyard in Port Glasgow which employed John Wood who went on to build the original Comet. Look, it's brilliant working on a comic project. It's really good, you know. I love getting up in the morning to go to work. Just to, it's just brilliant going to work in a comic. I like getting up and going and working with the guys. You know, it's a great bunch of guys. They're all hard working. They like getting in the morning, and just getting the tools out and getting right on. You know, there's there's no messing about. I feel as if I've learned a lot because it's a a thing that 
doesn't get done anymore. Um, it's a traditional boat building, you know. It's, it's it doesn't get done, and I'm I feel pleased that I'm a part of it, you know. It's part of the Port Glasgow, and I'm satisfied with what's been done. I've learned a lot, and I feel as if I, I've gained a lot of new skills that I'd never ever dreamed of having before. Um, it just it's really just a great thing to be a part of, especially as it's a part of Port Glasgow. You know, it makes it makes you feel good once once it's sitting back where it where it used to sit. It'll be brilliant. I'll be able to dive by and go. Oh, in August 2010, the trainees employed through the Future Jobs Fund completed their six-month programme. They had worked tirelessly to bring the Comet back to some of her original glory. However, the rebuild was still to be completed and a new team of men, employed through the Future Jobs Fund, have taken up tools to make complete the Comet rebuild.